Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. My name is Brian Doherty and I am a NetSuite Solutions Consultant for Awesome, a NetSuite Solution Provider based in Dublin. Today I will guide you through NetSuite One World Setup. The objective of this video is to help existing NetSuite customers to op optimize their use of NetSuite One World. Uh, today we will uh, look at the setup of GL codes, vendors and customers, and items. So I'll take you into NetSuite now. It's important that the GL codes, customers and vendor accounts and items are properly configured to ensure that intercompany transactions eliminate upon consolidation. For the GL codes, NetSuite uses a single chart of accounts across all subsidiaries. Only subsidiaries selected on a code can use that code. So if we look at our, this code here, which is the, an intercompany receivables code, um, at the moment we have it set up that the parent company and all its children can use this code. What we can do if we do if we want to limit the subsidiaries that can use the code, we can untick include children and choose one or more of the, set, the subsidiaries that can use this code. Other related items are eliminate intercompany transactions. So the eliminate intercompany transactions should be ticked for intercompany accounts. These accounts are used to record transactions between subsidiaries. The next relevant item is revalue open balance for foreign currency transactions. So take revalue open balance transactions for foreign currency transactions. When the account is used to record transactions in multiple currencies and intercompany transactions between subsidiaries with various base currencies. These accounts will be revalued at period end and for consolidation purposes. That brings us then to vendors and customers. The setup of the vendor and customers is pretty much similar uh, in relation to intercompany transactions and one world. Um, when, subsidiary, uh, when a vendor is used in more than one subsidiary, the permissible si subsidiaries can be attached to the vendor. The vendor account can only be used within subsidiaries listed within the subsidiary tab on the vendor. So in this example, this vendor's primary subsidiary is Ireland, and but this subsidiary can be used within both the Irish subsidiary and the Netherlands subsidiary. So what that means is if you go to do a PO for this subsidiary, you can do it for within both the Irish subsidiary and the Dutch subsidiary. In relation to intercompany vendors, so when subsidiaries within a group trade with each other, intercompany vendors and customers are created. The primary subsidiary is chosen, and this represents the subsidiary that the vendor belongs to. The subsidiary within the group that the record represents is also chosen. So in relation to this vendor here, this is the awesome Ireland vendor within the Dutch entity within the Netherlands. So the primary subsidiary is the Netherlands, but the sub subsidiary that it represents is Ireland. So the subsidiary within the group of companies is Ireland. Another related item is the default payables account. It's possible here to put an intercompany payables account, and that will help separate intercompany payables and trade payables within the balance sheet. Similarly, if we go to an inventory item, when we're setting up an inventory item within one world, we can choose what subsidiaries that this item relates to. Currently, I have it set that it is the parent company and all its children. But again, if this item can only be sold within the Irish entity, then we can just choose the Irish entity.
that brings me to the end of the presentation. If you have any further questions or wish to get in touch, please use the details below. Thank you for watching.